Forgive us, Father. Forgive us for being <laughs> selfish. Forgive us for being complacent. Forgive us, Father God, for being haphazard about what you want done. We thank you. Give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is faithful. He is faithful. So, he's <laughs> faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. He is faithful. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Turn this, uh, Lord, I decrease it, you may increase, have your way in the service. Turn the song. Psalm chapter one. Psalm chapter one. So I believe we got everything that we're supposed to get for now or from um, the uh, signs of the end. So we're gonna spend a couple Thursdays, maybe different titles, but all of it is gonna be self-evaluation. Um, so if you wanted to, <laughs> If you wanted to title this today, you know, it's a searching for significance. Searching for significance or searching within ourselves, right? So Psalm chapter one, it says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And they shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his seed, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shade which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Nor, sin, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So in this search within ourselves, then I know on Sundays we're talking about, uh, we've been talking about release and let go, the, the innermost man, the brokenness, all of that. It's, it's all doing internal evaluation. We good for doing external evaluations on others. We real good at that. We, we, I think we got that master. <laughs> but we have that master doing a self-evaluation. You know what I mean? When you when you had a, a certain jobs, I know that um that my previous management position, I would have my do my supervisors do a self-evaluation. And then I would match their self-evaluation up to what I actually evaluated them already. And amazingly, their self-evaluation blew my uh, evaluation away. Meaning, if I, if I said, okay, we'll raise yourself for, you know, being a, being a good communicator. You know, supervisor might have ranked himself at five, five being the highest. And I might have only had them in the three. So even when we're doing a self-evaluation, we got to be real about it. Because see, it wasn't until we had the conversation where I said, well, you know, I got this evaluation that you did. And then I got this one from me being the manager and observer. And I said, some of the numbers, is, you know, they, they, they on point. And others, they're... You, you either rate yourself low and I rate you higher, or you rate yourself real high and I might have had you in the middle. So we talk through those things. And, you know, some of it was agreeable, other parts of it was not. And that's usually what's going to happen when you're doing this self-evaluation. 
when you're really doing the self-evaluation that said before the Lord and allowing the Lord to just peel the onion off, different layers, stuff that we packed down from years ago, you know, and we got to get away from just saying, you know, the Lord is still working on because, you know, I can see that from a person that just walked in two weeks ago, last month, but for somebody that's been, you know, pressing into the, if you're pressing into the Lord, then the, the internal evaluation and the internal searching will start to reveal things, especially if it's been years. You know, no people been 25, 35 years. And they brag about their years of relationship with the Lord and what they've been exposed to. And I just feel like, but you still ain't doing the self-evaluation. Because if you really evaluate it yourself, you basically throwing smoke and mirrors and puffing yourself up based off of what you may or may not have been exposed to. So it doesn't matter what you've been exposed to, it's who have you exposed yourself to? Because, <laughs> you know, and we really exposed ourselves to the Lord. It ain't like he don't know anyway, right? But in this, in this internal search, it's like, Y'all know that little thing that um, we all got them. I don't even know if they do them anymore, but on the uh, rear view mirror, on the bottom of it, we would say objects in the mirror closer than they appear. Y'all remember seeing that? So objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. I don't think y'all understand what that The objects in the mirror on the inside are closer than they appear. The breakthrough is closer than it appears. The freedom is closer than it appears. The, the, the deliverance is closer than it appears. But if we ain't going inside, I remember the inside job, right? Yeah. If we ain't going on the inside, then it's just like, what are we doing? We fight this, this, this physical battle when it's really a spiritual battle. And if we follow where the Holy Holy Spirit leads us, we'll never make a wrong turn. Ain't that something? If we follow where the Holy Spirit leads us, we will never make a wrong turn or take a wrong turn. Right? And when we understand the good that adversity brings, it'll cause us to lean into the difficulties of life. It won't cause us to run from them. See, because a person that don't, don't that don't want to be built up on the inside, they don't run. They hide. When you see how many people you get challenged. I mean, whether you get challenged at work, whether you get challenged if somebody that had they 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 only uh, forty years old and they had seventeen jobs, they the problem, and they need to do an internal search. Every all managers and supervisors and coworkers ain't tripping. They may all be tripping, but no, 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 no. no. You seven, you'd have had 17 jobs and you only 40. Then you divide that number up, right? And you didn't start working until you got out of high school because you didn't want to do nothing when you was in high school because you was too busy playing sports. So then you get out of here, you know, you just playing sports, hoping that you can go to college, but you couldn't make the grade. You didn't have a high grade point average, so you couldn't get into college. I'm using this situation, y'all. Mm -hmm. you, you, you couldn't get into college because your GPA wasn't good enough, so then you're forced to go to work. And that's, eight, that's at 18. So in 22 years, you'd have had 17 jobs. You ain't really keep, kept a job over a year. I, you know, I was at that place for four years. Okay, so you stayed there from the years 18 to years 22. So now you had 16 jobs since you was 22. And, that, and that's 18 years. Now, and, and you really kept the job over a year. 
But then, you know, that's that's the type of stuff. Everybody is, is you know, we need to do, do some internal searching, right? And, 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 and right here in the word, he said, the man is blessed that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. People are seeking advice from people that don't even know God. Blessed is the blessed. You ask that same person, how you doing? I'm blessed. But then they over here talking to this heathen, asking them what they think they should do, and showing them how to cheat on stuff. But they bless. But you're walking in the counsel of the ungodly, and you're standing in the way of the sinner. And you're sitting in the seat of the scornful. You ain't got no delight. Right? It's hard, it's hard to find true hope and delight when people are exhausting their energy on, on image creation. Let me create this image you can see. Don't I look nice? <laughs> look at this side. They want to create an image so people that yeah, we can see what you look like on the outside. Yes, you look you're dressed nice, you look nice, your makeup's good, your wig is right. Your actual wig. Not the way you went about, <laughs> but your hair looked nice, all that, you, you know. But the inside, there's a scripture that says the inside is as rotten bone, rottenest bones. It said you don't put new wine in old wine skins. They gonna bust because that's fresh. That's why. That's why. That's why we. Our challenge with receiving revelation from God is because God said, I can't put this new wine or new revelation in that old wine skin. You got some stuff in there that gotta get out of the way. He said, be renewed in the spirit of our minds. And it, you know, that's an inside thing. That ain't being renewed, going to get some new clothes, new shoes, and all that. You look good, but don't. Feel good. Right? I mean, and, and, and it's, you're wasting and exhausting so much time and energy on an image and creating an image. So I want to encourage you with this. No matter how bleak, how discouraging, or how final your circumstances may seem, stretch your expectations to believe that out of every situation that looks bleak, discouraging, or maybe not look favorable, stretch your expectation that out of that situation, new opportunities and great success will come. And sometimes people defeat themselves on the inside and the outside ain't even that bad. I mean, you, know, you, you walk in like, What's wrong with you? I already know. How you know? You ain't even experienced that. Hallelujah. <laughs> and look, and, and, and the challenge is those people that don't have constant belief, those who have no constant belief never see miracles because they don't constantly believe for miracles. Let me say that again. Those who have no constant belief to see miracles will never see miracles because they don't constantly believe for miracles. Mm -hmm. When the situation is ugly, do you believe you're going to come out of it or do you just say, well, I'm just uh... I mean, in the, the days is over talking about, I'm getting, I understand we ain't getting no younger. We adding a year every year. I don't care. I don't care, ladies, if you don't want to tell your age, add me here every year. So let me find out how old you are, and I'm going to start keeping track. <laughs> but anyway, you add a year every year. And I understand what people say, we're not getting any young. I'm getting too old for this. But it's a lot of stuff that you haven't outgrown. Your age, your age number is growing up, but your spiritual stature is staying down. You're getting up in age, but you're not getting up in spirit. 
You're getting up in age, but you're not getting up in confidence. You're getting up in age, but you're still not seeking out God. You're getting up in age. Look, we still every day. I know this sounds crazy. I don't know where this just came from. I read it, and it just didn't just seem like it was prime time to say it because I was talking about age, and, and, and it went straight over to every, every all of this, everything. Watch, shirt, shoes, it all belongs to God. Time belongs to God. I was that day, that's why I was, I was checking it out. Uh, uh, I don't take nobody's credit. Miles Monroe said it. He was breaking it down as far as tithing. That's time. Time. We have 24 hours in a day. How many of us give God 2.4 hours every day? So you wonder why Malachi say, Will a man rob God? <laughs> he said you rob me in tithe and offerings Man, and see a lot of people just equate that to just money tithing is everything time is tithing the way he was breaking it down was ridiculous and it goes within the internal search because people ain't searching within themselves they got all of this stuff you gotta he said he but he said if you got he said fellas if you got 10 suits one of them is God's he said, ladies, if you got 10 dresses, one of them is God's. He said, you got 10 pair of shoes, a pair of them is God's. I was like, man, that's deep. I mean, he was getting deep with it. And then he went rolled over into the time, the 24 hours in the day. Because we say, God, God, look, God is outside of time, but he's controlling time, all the time. And we say, God is good when? And all the time, God is, you see what I'm saying? So time is his. But we don't give him back that. We don't give him 2.4. Seriously. Yeah, I mean, you know, some people just, the only prayer they get in, they, they pray three times a day. Unless they only eat twice. <laughs> You heard it coming, right? It's, it's one thing that this scripture we're reading right now. It's one thing for us to read it. It's another thing when it gets inside us. Seriously, it, it takes on a whole nother me. And see, once it gets inside of you, look, when it gets, not, not inside of here, but inside of the spirit, man, and in the, in the heart and soul, not just mind. Because I mean, people got scriptures memorized. We was having a conversation last week, and the individual was trying to convince us as far as like with, with, with abortions and stuff that, you know, this was something that happened in the Bible to Church of Israel. I was like, I don't know if I like to read that. Then I went back and read that. I was like, no, God killed them then. <laughs> God killed their firstborn. And then, then, then it was, uh, oh, you can go, but you can't take nobody else with you. I was like, I don't know what Moses said. No. Moses said, let me and my people go. He said, my strong man, the husbands, their kids, and their wives. But that was because it was here. You he ain't there. And see, when you run into someone that has it in here, it's hard to get them to just say, okay. Or just see what you say. Right? But anyway, like I said, it's one thing to read God's words in the Bible, but it's another thing to get it on the inside. And then it's a whole other thing to obey it. To do it. Situations and circumstances that have us freeze. And God said, they're not telling you to go on across the street. But God, it's a car coming. Oh, you looking at the car, you don't see that the light above the car is red. I told you to go. You think I'm going to put you in harm's way? I mean, that's something simple, right? 
You know, the people get up. I, I know it, man. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know by the spirit. People get up every day, especially on Thursdays and Sundays. I mean, them two days and two days we here. They get up on Thursdays and Sundays. And they know they're supposed to go to church. But they flesh because that's what's running their life. And then they want to do, I'm coming. I'm like, I'm like, tell y'all that's here. They're faithful ones. No offense. When you start saying it, if you see them and you start saying it, they'll be like, Pastor said that. Pastor May said that too. <laughs> don't, don't say, all right, I'm going to be looking for you. No, no. Say, I see you want to see you. Seriously, that's what I got to. I see you want to see you. Or I see you when I look at you. As Pastor Buddy would say, <laughs> I see you when I look at you. But it's one thing to get it in. It's one thing to read it. It's one thing to get it in. And it's another thing to obey it. Right? The, the, look, look. Uh, uh, A.W. Tozer said this. He said, the difficulty we modern Christians face is not misunderstanding the Bible, but persuading our untamed hearts to accept its plain instruction. He said, is di the difficulty we modern Christians face is not misunderstanding the Bible, but persuading our untamed hearts to accept its simple or plain instructions. Plain instruction. One, I will never leave you nor forsake you. There's no outs in that. There's no what ifs in that. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There ain't no outs in that. Right? God gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe on him shall be have eternal life. Ain't no outs in that. And those are just plain basic scripture that we know but the instructions we don't think we don't even make it it's so difficult because we want to we want to believe something or hear something else inside of our own hearts instead of letting the word get inside so we did it if we did an internal search you'll freely find out how much word is in there it won't be like break up it won't be in there Belief is in there. Faith is in there. Miracles, well, tongues, well, you know that that's old. Oh, really? Peace, well, you know, I ain't gonna let nobody steal my peace. Can't nobody go inside like you and steal your peace if it's in there. I'm just saying. <laughs> Turn to 2 Corinthians. I'm just saying. There's nothing worse than being disobedient to the one who created you. <laughs> if that don't stir up the kettle, that's a shaker right there. Ain't nothing worse than disobeying and being disobedient to the one that created you. That this can make your life or break your life. Right? And the, the reason people the reason the reason the struggle is so hard because this is what this is what people don't do. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Sorry, I didn't tell you how to chapter. I'm gonna read this. Out of the uh, FBV favorite Bible version. <laughs> Every high wall that stands tall and proud against the knowledge of God is not that. Every rebel idea is captured and brought into obedient agreement with Christ. Look, in the King James says, 
casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. He wasn't casting down imagination. Man, you, you hear people every day. Seriously. Well, I don't because I'm around people every day. Not no more. Sometimes I don't even leave the house. I just be home. I ain't around nobody. Can't nobody vex me. Can't nobody touch me. It gives me more time with the Lord and just sit in his presence and listen and, and get insight and get understanding and get sermons to drill on y'all. <laughs> but the same thing, I'm getting the sermons because he's drilling me. Right? Look, 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 look. We're the body of Christ. Merging Ministries is a body. And God is, is, the, is the shepherd, the master shepherd, the chief shepherd, the big head, if I can put it there. I'm just a little head over Merging Ministries. But so goes the head, so goes the body. So if he drilling me, I drill you. <laughs> because we got to walk together. We got to go together. Right? How do we get here? God. Right? It's, people ain't getting, getting rid of their thoughts. You hear them every day. But I was going to, but I was ready to say before I got off on me being alone, and I know some of y'all were jealous, but it's okay. But it's all right. You see, get that out of the inside of you. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but check it. So, people, you hear people at work. I used to hear them. They don't mind all over the place, man. I got so much going on in my mind. I, I mean, I just, if it ain't one thing, it's, it's, it's just all over. That's what they do. And it's like, no, cast down so many imaginations. And this is every high thought that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. What's the knowledge of God? Blessings the man that walk in not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor sit it in the way, nor stand it in the way of the sinner, nor sit it, nor stand it in the way of the sinner, nor sit it in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In the, and in this law does he meditate day and night. That, that, that's so anything that comes up against that, anything that comes up against God's word, I mean, I said it a while ago, and I happened to see it on one of the videos that as I was going through on um, edits and stuff. It says, I said, a, a person that don't trust God to give them the proper thoughts is a person that's headed for destruction. And they don't even know. You know why? Because they ain't even thinking. <laughs> More often than not, our hearts get cluttered up with worry, with pain, and that hinders us from hearing and leaning on the word of God. Even when we may not be aware that the worry, the pain, the stress, and all that other stuff is coming. It's, Jesus said in John 10, the thief comes not but to still kill and destroy our company. They may have life and have life more abundantly. Right? So then, then he went into the whole parable. He said, the, the, the sower sold off the word. He said, there's something that was sold on the wayside. There's some that was sown on stony ground. There's some that was sown in, in, on hard ground, not this soil. See, the, 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 the wet on good soil was on concrete. It grew as soon as the sun came out. Boom, it's gone. You see that? It, it's your house, at our houses. Yeah, where the weeds come from? In the sidewalk. Let that sun get hot enough. The weeds going to die. Because they ain't got no root. They living on concrete. All right. So we have to get it on the inside. Get it on the inside. 
Listen, remember, remember a few minutes ago I mentioned about the prayer about the peace being in there. Listen at this thing. There are times when inner peace is based on ignorance. But when we awake to the troubles of life, which which more than ever before surge and heave threatening blows, what's gonna happen to that peace? Because a lot of peace is based on ignorance. It's based on ignorance. You know why I say that? Because it ain't the peace of God, for one. Mm. Because it said, let the peace of God rule your hearts and minds. Follow the peace of God. But listen at that. Listen at that. People will say, I'm just following the peace of God. No, I said, let the peace of God rule on the inside. Here and here. But if you're following God's peace, that's a whole other thing. That means his peace, he gave you the peace on the inside. So now when he's telling you to move, now you're following his peace. But people talk about, you don't let nobody step on peace. I didn't even on the inside to get it. He just gave you the real English thing. But their, their, their peace is based on ignorance because they'll not be, they'll, they'll say, I, I just can't deal with it. Who's them people? Them is God's people. I don't care, but I understand people worshiping Satan, worshiping the devil, doing things that are ungodly. But that, that doesn't discount the fact that you did something in your lifetime for a long time ungodly. You did something in your lifetime for a long time ungodly. You did something in your lifetime and for a long time that was ungodly. God can reach whoever he needs to reach. Somebody want to go to safari in Africa. <laughs> so I got a ringtone because it keeps me peaceful. Now let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help it. Was, but no. I mean, but that's what a person that says about their peace. You know, I mean, I ain't letting nobody sell my peace. So then they discount others because they feel like they're going to die. They can't take your peace unless you give it away. I mean, I'm peaceful. Doesn't Hebrew say, live peaceably? With all men. And then Paul said in 1 Corinthians, I become all things to all men so I can win some. I ain't gonna be able to win everybody. But I'm gonna become all things to all men that I can win some. I mean, come on, think about Paul. This is the dude that the Bible said in the message remember, was breathing threatenings and killings to, to do with the, to take out the Christians. On his way to deliver the letter to make it all happen, mm -hmm. God said, "Oh, I, I, Paul, I've been waiting, I've been waiting for you on this road, brother. I knew you was coming down this street. See, you was coming down the road to Damascus, but you came down the road to the master, <laughs> and you ran into the master." But I mean, you know, the, the whole the whole thing, man, no. But that, but then that's internal though. That's an internal issue. Nobody, nobody better not tell you you got no internal problems. They don't want me. Really? Just by that response, something wrong with you. <laughs> God, God is not like people, people say, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. When I get myself together, then I'm coming. You ain't gonna get yourself together. Stop saying it. How many times did you say it before? And then you finally said, I need to come to church because I need look, I need to come to church because I need to get myself together. But then you got on the flip side of that, the same individuals that make that statement is the same ones that say, Well, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come to church when I get myself together. But you just got done saying. Last year, before you stopped church, I was coming to church so I can get myself together. Now you stop coming to church to say, 
you, you, uh, you can stop coming to church and then you go get yourself together, mm-hmm. let me know how that work out. Or let me just say, take, 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 take the time frame that you think gone and let me ask you, how's that working out? But you you have a false sense of peace. It ain't real peace. Hallelujah. But God is looking for people for us just to converse with him. Just like when we read this word, he's talking to us. When we pray, we talking to him. But then when we read this word, we talking to him. And then when we pray, he talking to us. <laughs> God is like, okay, I'm a multi-communicator. I know how to communicate to you. I communicate to you one way or the other. If you open. Right? But this is you, the imaginations, all that stuff that's, that's just clutter. In the clutter in people's hearts, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't totally came to the realization, man, that people really do not understand how bad unforgiveness is. They really don't. People really don't know how bad and the effects of unforgiveness because they'll psych themselves out and think that they're right. You never thought of unforgiveness. This is on a whole nother beam path. You never thought of unforgiveness as being a deceiver. Because a person can be in unforgiveness, they didn't deceive themselves into thinking that the way that they're acting is right, and the way that they're talking is right, and the things that they're doing is right. I'm, I'm, look, I tell you, I tell you the testimony how, how deep unforgiveness is. So, um, the, 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 the uh, young lady that said, uh, I don't know what you did, but you better fix it. Remember that? I'm just preaching. The conviction was hitting so hard. Mm-hmm. She couldn't get free. You know why she couldn't get free? Because she had unforgiveness. Mm-hmm. And then it was discovered by the Holy Spirit, revealed it. And then it was like, oh, you just you need to forgive them. Broke down. Mm-hmm. It was like, no. Don't just forgive them. Forgive them by name. Then you can just see all of it falling off. You had to be in the spirit to see it. All of it just falling off. And she says, I'm free. You better trust Jesus. I'm free. He did it. She didn't say he did it or he did it that was preaching. She said Jesus did it. Because Jesus did it. He gets all the glory. Yeah. You can't, you can't help, you can't deliver nobody. You can't cast out no demon. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, he's given us the power, don't get it wrong. But it's still, if he gave it to you, it's his. It once was his. He ain't relinquished all power. He said all power is in his hand. So he gave you a little bit of the power. He gave you some of the power. Then he said, oh, the things that I do, you can do the same and greater. But you know why people can't do the same and greater? Because they ain't doing the search for the significance. <laughs> Internal search. Right? God, God is not interested in reaching you God is not interested in reaching you or teaching you to get to a level of perfection. Because you'll never be perfected. But then, right? But then don't let the world come back to you and say, ain't nobody perfect. Because now that's a cop out to keep on doing what they're doing. Right? So God, God is not interested in trying to perfect you like that. But yet, the Bible tells us faith, hope, all of these things is, but let it have its perfect work. So if it's working in me, it's perfected. How about that? Ain't that something? So you're going to tell me by looking at me from the outside, 
that I ain't perfect. On the outside, I'm not. But I am on the inside. Because you continue, as you continue in this search for those things, I understand the Bible says the heart is deceitfully weak and above all things. We went through that with the plant. I remember that, right? I got that. But it says, David was a man after God's own heart. David done some outlandish things. And God still covered him and kept it. Right? So we have done some outlandish things. And God still covered it, covered, covers us and keeps us. <clears throat> so if it says that I serve a, I serve a perfect God he, he said God will perfect those things that concerns me isn't that what the word says huh he said oh, he will perfect those things that concern me if he's going to perfect those things where are those things at I'm glad you asked me that question because the, 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 those thoughts they run around. The wants, they run around. The needs, they run around. The to do's, the work drama, the family issues, the resentment, the bitterness, the unchecked thoughts, the unchecked words, they all overpower us. But God said, I'm going to perfect the thing that concerns you. It concerns me, Lord, that at times this over here aggravates me. And, you know, I, yeah, I get the 11s, and, you know, I want to do something. Oh, that concerns you, Nate. Well, let's do an internal search. Let's have let let let's have open heart surgery. I mean, he put the rib back in Adam. He said he, he said he, he opened up his flesh, pulled the rib out, and closed it up. So why can't he pull open me up, pull out the junk, and close me back up? Right. Uh, the great man of God said this, uh, Keith Bradley is his name. He said, what's not exposed can be helped. People don't want to be exposed. I'm not trying to find a kink in your armor. I'm trying to, if the only reason I might be looking for a kink in your armor, and I'm not looking for it, I might come across it. But my whole thing is, if I come across a kink in the armor, let's say, let's just say this is the kink in the armor, my whole thing is, well, let me cover it up. And help you, you know, weld it back together. But if you ain't gonna expose it, then you can't get helped. And that's the issue with the, the, the searching for the significance and searching within doing the internal searches because well, we got our people have them off their own self deceived off of their own heart. But like, I remember the poll. Do you believe you got a good heart? 100%. Mm -hmm. Do you spend time with God on a daily basis? 25%. But you believe you got a good heart? Hold on. Do you believe you're going to go with the Lord when he comes back? What was that? 65%? 35%? Something like that? The number is you went from a good heart so I don't know if I'm going to go with the Lord to know I'm spending on time with God. 10% say they spend time with God every day. 10%. Well, I guess that's the tithe off of 100. <laughs> 10 people. Hallelujah. But the thoughts, the work dramas, the desires, the needs, and the dues, God put those things concern us. God said, I'm perfect. And, 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 and why, why, look, why I, what, God, what God is saying, while I'm perfecting it, you cast it down. Because I, I can't perfect it until you start casting it down. When you start casting it down, I start perfecting. When you start speaking against it, I'll keep on perfecting. And before you know, you'll be perfect from the inside out. But then culture in the world is saying, ain't nobody perfect. You ain't walking on water. Mm -hmm. 
That's water, ain't it? Watch me walk on it. <laughs> I can't, I can't help it. It was wide open, man. Because people say that. You ain't walking on water. Let me, let me get that up before I mess around and forget. <laughs> that was funny, though, right? Right? So next time somebody do that, you go grab a bottle of water and say, watch me. Now, hold on, let me show you. It's, 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 it's cool enough. I did the rest of it. <laughs> Let's see. Hallelujah. Really going to perfect those things, man. Look, look. Because the power of God's peace not our own peace will enable us, will, will steer us into the exact course. Remember in the beginning, we said, if you follow the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost leads you, never make a wrong turn. When, we, when, the, when the power of God's peace will enable us to steer our course in the mix of ordinary day to day life, he, his peace will be like, hey, turn. Okay, make it, make it turn. Maybe be like, they over there tripping. Yeah, he told you don't go down that way. And turn. He was ready to say something. He said, turn it. Flip it. Don't say that. He was ready to do something. Watch this. I'm going to get them back. He's like, oh, you're going to get them back? No, I'm not. Don't worry. <laughs> right? He's steering us in the, in the ordinary, everyday life. Right? We'll never be good enough on our own. Listen, just man, it says we'll never be good enough on our own for heaven. We'll never love perfect enough on our own to have a beautiful marriage. We'll never be wise, compassionate, or caring enough to mend someone's brokenness on our own. God doesn't expect you to have it all together, but he wants you to get it together. Ain't that something? They're like, God don't expect me to have it all together, but he wants me to get it together. And, and, and you know how you get it together? It's amazing. He don't expect us to have it all together, but he wants us to get it together. And the only way we can get it together is if we run the hill. <laughs> So, so God is like, okay, I don't look, 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 look. I don't expect you to have it all together, but I want you to get it together. When you, when you talk to the kids, they should, you better get it together. As if they can get it together. But then when they're, and then it's like, oh. But well, see, this is what you need. Now you would give, now you tell them how to get it right. So God don't expect us to have it all together. But he's expecting us to get it together. And the only way we can get it together is when we run to him. Because if we don't run to him, we will never get it together. So all the people that talk about, I'm coming when I get it, when I get when I get it together, you will never get it together. Run to God, then you don't get it together. All right. Hallelujah. Let's look at Romans 7. Then we're gonna be ready to get. Be close to wrapping up. Romans chapter 7. Paul. <laughs> Ain't that something? I mean, we can read the whole we, 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 we can almost read the whole thing. Seven, right? All right. Uh, look at verse five. But when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members. Where did it work at? 
in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nah, I had not known sin but by the law. See, you only learned about sin because there was the law in place. You only learned about robbery or that you were wrong. You only learned about the ticket when you ran the red light. I'm, I'm naming natural stuff because there's a law. Okay. If there was no law, then the, then the Bible says that the end of lawlessness will run rampant. And we see it. All right. And I don't want to get into the end. Let's stay, let we, we don't want to talk, talk about the E-N-D. We want to talk about the I-N. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except the law has said, thou should not covet. But sin taking occasion by the commandment brought in me. Where did we all get in me? All manner of concubine. concubine. For without the law, sin was dead. Look, for I was alive. But I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment is holy and just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, the sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual. Huh? But we're no longer under the law. All right. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. But that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth where? In me. For I know that where in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Paul well, said that I want to do good, but I can't. Because of what's on the inside. So that's why we have to dig in pride. Uh, 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 Pastor Bradley had a series some years ago, which was one of the visions. He's like, commit to the dig. And I look at that as commit to do some internal searching. In, in this search, I'm searching for the significance. My significance in Christ Jesus. My significance as a born again believer. My significance in the, what he's called me to do. These are the significant things I'm looking for. I'm not looking nothing, looking for nothing significant for me. I'm looking for the significance of him. Do you feel me? But then, you know, that, that whole thing, and that's when people get self. They get their self in a way. Self, self, self. And if you want to be about yourself, there's some dangers. There's dangers. There's dangers when you're about yourself. Because if you buy yourself, you buy yourself. No, you didn't hear me. Because if you're by yourself, you buy yourself. That's why you're sold, sold into slavery to self. Because <laughs> if you buy yourself, you buy yourself. 
and then you're sold into slavery. And then you fall into the straight in the flesh. And Paul said, there's nothing good to dwell in my flesh. Right? Mm -hmm. It says in verse 21, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. It didn't say that, look, he started out and said, if he's in the flesh, it's the sin that's in him that's doing it. But he said, I, but I'm no longer in the flesh because there's nothing good in my flesh. So I'm, so I'm in the spirit because the, the law is spirit. And, and where the law is, that's spiritual. But I'm, I'm carnal, sold under sin. But see, if I get spiritual and I stay spiritual and I operate spiritually from the inside out, then not, 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 nothing bad is going to be in there. You have an opportunity to love like Jesus. I don't think nobody can love like that. Yes, people can. Because he said the things I do, you'd be able to do the same and greater. And that, 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 that just doesn't apply to miracles and casting out devils. That applies to being able to love like that. To forgive like that. Because he you hanging on the cross, you dying. You dying. Jesus dying on the cross. And one of his biggest statements, we say it's the seven last words. It's one of the seven last statements from seven last words that he shared. He said, Father, forgive them. Huh? Man, if you die, you think about forgiving somebody? You think about asking God to forgive somebody that's killing you? No, you die and eat. You dying and all kind of stuff going through your head. I mean, if I can get up out of here, man, I'm telling you, I'll kill you, man. I'll take you back out. you be going with me. <laughs> right? <laughs> Serious. But Jesus, Jesus, he, he, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. So we can be, you, you can forgive people like that. We can forgive like that. We can love like that. We can have joy like that. Seriously, when I feel like when I feel like it's a stench or or, 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 or stench or, or, or not a sweet smelling savior going on, I I I I, I, get, I go quiet. But then I bounce back. <laughs> I go quiet just so I don't get it, so I don't allow my flesh or my mind or me to just start to, to get in the way. I'll go quiet with, with people, period. And they'll be like, what's wrong? Oh, ain't nothing wrong. Right now, right now, I'm, I'm ensuring that nothing is trying to see and sneak in on the inside to get me to feel no kind of way. Because if I go off my feelings, then I won't be, I won't be filled. I won't get God's joy. I won't get God's peace. I won't have God's love. I won't have God's forgiveness. All right. Mm. All right. Oh, yeah. I got my three minutes. Yeah. <sighs> So when we when we encounter, we'll get these last two points, and then we we'll pick up the rest next week. The, da the dangers of buying yourself. See, because on this search for significance, you can easily stumble across you. Because, but the search for significance, it's an internal search in you to find that to find that spirit of God that's in there, so He can start taking over. But on that search, you know, when people go on a, a, a search for something, they run across all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. They find all kinds of things. You ever saw the, uh, 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 what was that Nicholas Cage movie, Treasure Hunt? Or Treasure? Dash mm -hmm. or something about the treasure. He coming across stuff and he's like, that's valuable, but that's not what we're going to get. <laughs> So that's what I want to say to you on this search for significance where you're searching in deeper into the things of God. You'll come across yourself. But there's something more valuable than you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
There's something more valuable, valuable than you. When they search, I'm searching, I'm searching, I'm digging, I'm trying to find out more about God, more about who God said I am, more how the Holy Spirit can use me, more about the calling and purpose that God put on my life. Dude, what you doing? That right now, you don't matter. Because when you come across yourself, you see, y'all remember a statement? It's not about you, but it's about you. The real you. Yeah. Quit being an imposter. See, because imposters make it impossible. <laughs> the imposters make it impossible bringing forth all kinds of implications. Mm -hmm. Well, we're trying to seek God out for improvements. They're not trying to improvise. Okay, I'm giving y'all the I am's. Because you try to search for the great I am. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> it's, 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 look, look, the calamities in, in, in this world, sickness, disease, bereavement, all of that will wake you up. They shake you up. I mean, I didn't know uh, eulogies, I didn't preach. Eulogies are actually preaching at funerals and all of that stuff, man. And I, it's, it's astonishing. It's, it, it amazes me, man. People get saved at a funeral. You know why? Because death woke them up. Mm -hmm. And some people, they stick to it. And they keep coming to church. And they get committed to church. And they really do change their life. Other people, they just did it because at that moment they had conviction. But then, the other calamities of the world and the cares of the world got them off guard. You just gave your life to the Lord. I'm not expecting you to be able to speak eloquently or do a, or have a hold a Billy Graham crusade or nothing like that, like tomorrow. Because you just got you just gave your life to the Lord. You went outside the funeral home, now you're ready to fight and cuss in my house. I, hey, I understand. You just got saved. But when you have a real encounter with Jesus, change happens. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the calamities in this natural world, sickness, disease, death, bereavement, that, that'll, wake it, that'll, wake a man, that'll wake a man up. That'll make him start thinking about stuff. What's going on on the inside? Mm -hmm. But see, that we don't have to have disaster to go on the search. Right? You don't gotta have this. I mean, if something disastrous happened, I was, I was in the military, nothing never happened disastrous, but we were trained. If, if the ship is going down, we, there's gonna be a search party. If there's a fire, there's gonna be a search party. Even in your job, some people are, are assigned on the search and rescue team. Every, every company has a search and rescue team. They may not call it the same thing, but you have a search, a SAR, search and rescue team. Sorry. And they, they, these certain people are assigned. If some, some, a disaster happens, they go searching. Let's not wait for a disaster to happen to go searching. Let's go search in the good time. When everything is going good, let's do some search. And, and, and look, and, look and it, ain't no, it ain't no drill. It's a real live search. I'm not just trying to do this to see if I can do it. You know, because you have a drill, tornado drill, fire drill, hurricane drill. All them drills is to get, see how fast people can get out. No, this ain't no drill. This is real life. I'm going to keep digging. I'm going to do some searching while it's pleasant. I ain't going to wait till a disaster try to hit. Notice I say try to hit. Because the Bible said no weapon form against me shall prosper. It's going to form, but it ain't going to prosper. The disaster might show up, but it ain't, it ain't going to have no impact. Hallelujah. Then this last statement, 
think I might have made it a while ago, but I, I've done some searching and I found it again. Do I welcome God to interrupt my life or do I have a do not disturb sign on the door of my life? Can God come in and just disrupt my life? All for the good. See this right here? This doing some doing some this doing some there's some searching for significance of him and doing some internal searching within ourselves. That I mean, no, nobody want to do that. That's a disruption. I was just fine reading my daily devotional and my four scriptures and praying for 20 minutes. I was fine, Pastor. Why are you going to do this? Talk about no search. Yes, yeah, search. There's more. Because it says we have this treasure in these earthen vessels. There's a treasure on the inside. Yes, I'm going to go search for that significance. You feel me? <laughs> man, come on, man. That got to give me, man. Are you willing to go search? Or do, do, do somebody, we got to call in a search party. <laughs> I mean, that's, what, that's what's really happening. You know, when people get... Uh, demons cast out of them and all of that stuff. It's a search party. It's like, we don't go search it. Instead of the person, just example. If, it's, if a person is dealing with so much pain and grief that they never, uh, they, 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 they just taking it. They ain't even dealing with it. They just letting it compile. Mm -hmm. I got to search through all of that instead of you saying, I know it started when my daddy left home. That, that's where it started. Let's get that out. Because once we can get that out, then we can get all the other stuff. That, that's when we send it in a search party. We got to send the search party in to try to find out what's wrong with you. When did, when did it? I mean, think about it. Jesus said, when did this start? When did this begin? He said, well, it happened with the blinds and that. Oh, well, this is all for God's glory. But he had a, he wanted to know where, where it was. He knew anyway. It's almost like God said, Adam, where are you? Jesus said, when did this start? <laughs> like he didn't know, right? <laughs> he knew. He knew when it started. It's like, he, who touched me? He God, he knows everything. Hey, who touched me? Hey, come on, Jesus. That's my dad. Hey, look, man. Gee, look, that's that's it, seriously. You, you, Jesus, you, Jesus, God, son. You know everything. You were there at the beginning. You see everything. He says everything. But look, he had to ask you touch him because he was operating as a natural man as well. I mean, he knew he knew virtue had left his body. The people don't know when the demon is kept getting cast on the or, 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 like the, the young lady, she's like, I don't know what you did, but you got to fix it. But she also shared a story before. She was like, you know, I, I, a witch. I dealt with a witch. Like she, she just brushed up against me and transferred some spirits. Went in her. She started having seizures. But you just think about it. Even, 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 even with the, even with the person having seizures, that's just that's anxiety. It, it's something that triggers it. Just like people talk about different things as hereditary. Nah, I guess, the, I guess the, the the heredity stopped at me. In Jesus' name, it stops at you. It, 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 that's it. it. When I say it stopped at me, that don't mean I'm taking it on. That mean it ain't gonna come on me. And it ain't gonna be on none of my children or grandchildren. Well, you know, certain things skip a generation, but it ain't just gonna keep on hopscotch. It ain't gonna never land. You know, you know the hopscotch you used to get get the rock right, or the, whatever you would toss out there, you could go up that far, and you had to do the two, the one, and you know, just keep on skipping. <laughs> keep on skipping. Go, 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 go down the road somewhere, man. Hallelujah. But let's do this search, man. Internal search. Search for the significance. Hallelujah. 
See, it goes there longer. We would come to church, they had a phone. They would start catching y'all at the front door. Put your phone on silent. I don't know 